and my name is Maria from designbymaria.com. Today I'm going to teach you how to teach long division for fourth graders. I have designed a kit to go along with this and I'll link to that in the description but if you don't want to purchase my kit I understand so I also am going to make it super easy for you to do this with supplies that you have already. I've divided this into three sections concrete, pictorial, and abstract. So we're going to go through each section and they build upon each other. So you'll want to start with concrete. Before we dive right in, I suggest that teachers spend a few days reviewing basic division. This might seem kind of annoying because shouldn't the kids have learned this in third grade and spent a lot of time on it? And that's true. But to be honest, kids forget things and they're not used to maybe the way that you teach versus the teacher that they had the previous year, and some students might have maybe not really understood it. So let's make sure before we start trying to do long division that the students understand basic division. In this kit I designed, I have some problems that you can use and you can teach the students different ways of doing basic division. But you could also make up your own problems, write things on the whiteboard. I think this review is really important so all the students are on the same page. And this way you can see maybe who is struggling a little bit before you even start because you don't want to get into long division if they don't remember how to do basic division. After you feel like your students are really solid on their basic division, it's time to move into division with remainders. This can be kind of a tricky concept, but I think division with remainders really helps move into long division. You can show division using pictorial methods and abstract methods. My personal favorite is if you can get to the point where the students can make a multiple list and then they can see which number is closest to the number without going over. I have designed a presentation for you to teach long division to your whole class. I love this little introduction to division because it really gets them to understand why we divide each place value instead of trying to just look at the number as a whole thing. If you decide to purchase the kit, there are instructions on how to set up this presentation and how questions you can ask your students. Also an example word problem. If you don't want to purchase the kit, that's okay. Instead of printing out these little boxes, you can just put Smarties in a bag. There are different word problems that I show on that presentation, but just to give you an idea, let's use the number 246 divided by 2. To prepare for this example, remove the extra Smarties from 24 rolls so that each roll has 10 Smarties. If you do this in the springtime, I noticed that the Easter Smarties this year came in rolls of 10 already. Print and assemble two boxes or get two bags and put 10 rolls of Smarty in each box or bag. You will also need six loose Smarties. Explain to the students that you have 246 Smarties and you want to share them with two people. You could have two students come to the front of the class to help you with this demonstration. Write the equation 246 divided by two on the board. Explain that each box contains 10 rolls of Smarties and each roll contains 10 Smarties. Show that you also have four rolls and six individual Smarties. Have a discussion about how you can go about dividing the Smarties. Show the students you can divide them equally without needing to open any boxes or rolls. Discuss how you can see how many each person has by counting how many hundreds boxes, tens rolls, and individual Smarties rather than opening everything up and counting each Smartie. Then give the students a different number and say, what if we want to share the Smarties with a different number of people? In this example, I'll use the number four. If we are sharing the Smarties with four people, it doesn't come out evenly like it did with two people. However, instead of opening everything all up and having a huge pile of individual Smarties, what if we start by just opening the boxes and sharing the rolls? This is like starting with the largest place value when dividing. We will start by seeing if we can divide the hundreds out evenly. In this case, we can't. So we open up the boxes and turn each hundred box into 10 rolls. Now we will have 24 rolls of 10. After we divide the rolls up, if there were extra rolls, we could open the rolls and divide those out. Once again, we know our answer by counting how many hundreds, tens, and ones we have. 
I intentionally designed this to be similar to how you would divide using base 10 blocks so students can draw the connection. One important thing to point out with the class presentation is you want to start with the largest place value first and then work your way down. It doesn't make sense to just put all the Smarties in a pile and try and divide that whole number at the same time. I like to have something that re represents the ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands places. So if you have some play money that you can use for your students, that will work great. I also have um, money included in the kit. It's math money. <laughs> it's not real money. And then also if you have base 10 blocks, that's another great thing that you can use for long division. If you don't have enough base 10 blocks for all of your students, you can use the base 10 cards that are in this kit. So you just print them out and students that are familiar with these base 10 blocks know that you can exchange a thousands card for ten hundreds cards or one hundred card for ten ten cards or one tens card for ten one cards. So the purpose of this rectangle sheet is just to have a way to divide up your piles. So all we're doing is we're starting with the largest place value and we're dividing them up. If we have leftovers, we take that and we break it up into 10 of the next place value and we divide it up. And so this is a nice hands-on way for students to get the idea of division. If they've played a lot of card games, if they've played Monopoly, then this should feel really easy and simple to them. In my kit, I provide the word problems that you can use with these rectangle papers and then also there's the money ones and there's also the base 10 ones that you can divide out. Before I get into explaining the pictorial method, I would like the students to make sure that they know how to draw their base 10 models. Most students have been drawing these base 10 models since like second grade or first grade, so they should be really familiar with drawing base 10 models. My kit has a worksheet that has students draw base 10 models. You could also just write the number on the board and have students draw them on their whiteboards or on a piece of paper. Remember, we're drawing dots for ones, lines for tens, squares for hundreds, and when you get into the thousands, I encourage students just to do a larger circle because it seems like fourth graders really want to learn how to draw the cube and they spend so much time drawing this cube and not as much time doing their math. <laughs> There's a poster that has all the division terminology on it. You can make your own also. For some students, thinking about division as taking the whole stack and dividing it all into piles, one for you, one for you, one for you, like they're dealing cards, is the easiest way for them to understand division. So I'm starting out my pictorial method by starting with the piles already separated out. And then they take the number and they divide the hundreds into each circle and the tens into each circle and the ones into each circle and there's no remainders. And then we want to start transitioning into, it's actually easier to draw the number first in, ba in a base 10 model and then circle groups. What I like to explain is the reason that we are circling groups of the divisor. So like if we were dividing by nine, we would be circling groups of nine. The reason we do that is because one of those circles represents enough to give each person one. So if we're sharing, if the students are thinking in that mindset of like division is like dealing cards, one for you, one for you, one for you. If we can explain to them that we're, use, we're using, we're making a circle of that many because that's how many it would take to give each of them one. So that's really what we want to transition into from taking the whole amount and putting it into piles. Instead, we want to start with the whole amount and circle groups so that it's easier to count and it keeps our work a lot tidier. But to make pictorial long division really simple, I created these classroom signs. But you can make your own signs and you can just walk students through the steps as a class so that they know how to do it. Step one, draw the dividend using base 10 model. Number two, circle groups of the divisor starting with the largest place value. Then you are going to break up the remainders for each place value into 10 of the next smallest place value. 
Cross them off as you go. Count the number of circles in each place value. This is the quotient. So I have several of these pictorial long division worksheets for them so that they can practice doing this. And I left lots of room, but encourage the students to be really neat and tidy. Otherwise it becomes a big mess and it's hard to figure out where you made mistakes. I love to include word problems. Of course, all of my worksheets have answer keys. I love the place value method for long division. Sometimes I call it the box method. Not every teacher is going to buy in to the box method and not every teacher understands the box method. So even though to me, the box method or the place value method is exactly the same thing as the standard algorithm. One is just drawn in a horizontal format where each place value is divided in a simple way, I feel like for students to understand. The standard algorithm is probably what they're going to be using in the next grade level. So we want to work our way from the box method up to the standard algorithm. To set up for the place value method, Write the divisor in front like usual, then write the dividend with each number spaced out a little and lines between. In this example, we'll divide 971 by four. For many students, starting with a multiple list of the divisor is really helpful. My daughter did this example and she knows her multiples really well, so she didn't do that. You will start in the largest place value and find the number that is closest without going over, which is eight. So divide eight by four is two, write the two at the top and the eight at the bottom. Nine minus eight is one. Take the extra one and break it into 10 of the next place value by moving it in front of the number. Now we're dividing 17 by four. The closest is 16, which is four times four. So put four at the top and the 16 under the 17. Subtract and bring that extra one in front of the one in the ones place to make 11. Now what's the closest to 11 without going over? It's eight. So put your two at the top and write the eight below the 11. Subtract to get three. If we had another place value remaining, we would put three in front of it. But since we're in the ones place, that is our remainder. Um, for the standard algorithm, we use the dirty monkey smell bad acronym, which a lot of teachers use. There's some posters that you can put in your room. You could also design your own but it just helps them to keep track of the steps. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. For the standard algorithm in this example, first we divide seven by three. The answer is two. So we would write two at the top. Next, multiply two times three equals six. Write six at the bottom, then subtract six from seven to get one. Last, bring down the next number, which is nine, to make 19. Now start again by dividing 19 by three to get six. Multiply three times six equals eight. Subtract 19 minus 18 equals one. Because there are no numbers left to bring down, this is our remainder. Of course, you know I love word problems and these ones have plenty of room for them to show their work. You could also make up your own word problems or find some online as well. I hope you find this helpful for teaching your students long division. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Also, I would really appreciate if you would like and subscribe. It helps me to continue to make videos like this.